Now I know I said this weekend I wasn't gonna source anything to resell on eBay. The garage is filling up. But when you see a deal on Facebook Marketplace, sometimes you just gotta jump on it. Ian, the master of pieces, part-time eBay reseller. Today we've come out to Cambran, just north of Newport, a little bit of a drive, but it was definitely worth it. I've also done an absolutely amazing swap with one of my friends, David. Amazing in the sense that if you love your retro toys, if you love your retro gaming, you'll love this swap. A little bit of a disclaimer, this is not going to be for reselling. All of this is going to go in my personal collection, but you're going to want to check it out. But when I travel a bit further afield to make a Facebook Marketplace pickup, I bring the family as well because you get to explore the local area. Blind Brown Reservoir just up there. These woods are absolutely beautiful. Let's get back to the garage. Let me show you what I picked up. I picked up five Pokemon Builder Bears. This is the first one here, Psyduck. Really great lightness, actually. Love him. He's kind of as fat as he is tall. There's a little Builder Bear logo on there. He does have, or he should make noise, but the batteries run out. But what I will do is take him down the Builder Bear shop in Cardiff, get them to put a new battery in there. That's what they did with the Snorlax one. He's worth about 50 quid plus postage. Bit more of a common one. We've got Charmander. What makes this one particularly special is he's got his little Pokeball hoodie. This one's been through the wash a few times. You can kind of tell by the fur, still. Nice looking Teddy. With that hoodie, should be worth about 25 quid. Piplup. This one is particularly rare, actually. Now, I'm more of a fan of the first generation Pokemon, so I don't see the same appeal in this one as the others, but certainly a lot of people do. This one is pretty rare. Should be looking at 50 to 60 quid as well. I picked up a Mew. This is a pretty ugly looking thing. It looks it looks like a raw chicken. Long tail on the back, I can imagine that could get damaged quite easily. I mean, it just doesn't have the eye appeal. But if you're collecting Pokemon Builder Bears, you need to have a Mew to finish your set. That one's worth about 30 quid. And finally, probably the best one of the bunch, we've got this Vaporeon here. Annoyingly though, they've cut the Builder Bear tag off. Now, I don't know if that affects the price. But still, no marks, no stains. These have been well looked after. The going rate for this one is 75 quid to 100 pounds. So that was 100 pounds paid for all of these Builder Bears, about 20 quid each. But selling them all off individually, I should be looking at about 250 pounds worth of sales, there or thereabouts. Take off fees, take off postage. That's about 100 quid profit. Spent 100 pounds to make 100 pounds profit. So I'm doubling my money. What I quite like about this pickup though is that money is spread across five items. The risk is spread. These are mega popular. The sell through rate is fantastic. There's more sold than there are listed, which means that these shouldn't hang around too long. What I'm noticing with the Builder Bear Pokemon is they only are in store and available to buy for a short period of time. There's such a collector's market for them. The second hand market is booming. Perhaps it's something you could invest in, sit on for a longer amount of time because the demand's not going to drop. If anything, it's going to increase. And maybe these might be actually worth a bit more in the future, unless they start to reproduce them again. I think though, at the minute, I'm going to be cashing in. Oh, and another thing that I did with this seller, and it's worth you doing it as well, right, is if you've agreed to pick up some off of Marketplace, just scroll through the other things that they got for sale. If they're selling stuff like this, then they might have other collectibles, other gaming stuff. You never know, do you? And actually, I bought a Nintendo DS cartridge. It's Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Not worth going up and just picking it up on its own. I paid a fiver for it. It's worth about 15. But because I was already picking these up, it was worth me buying that at the same time, wouldn't it? So that's a nice little tenner profit. But what I really wanted to tell you about in today's video is a swap I've done with my friend David, the Welsh GameCube collector. Now he knows exactly the type of stuff that I'm into. I mean, it's quite hard not to really. You can see it all in the backdrop there. And he's a little bit of a collector himself. Um, well, he took me through his GameCube collection. Amazing. But he's into his retro Ghostbusters and his brother Marcus is into Jurassic Park. So we agreed to do a trade. In fact, David sent me a message during the week of a few pictures of some items that he picked up and I had to have them. So what I've ended up doing is getting rid of all of my old Jurassic Park, all of my old Ghostbusters stuff, some Pokemon bits as well. But in return, I've got some really cool items. Let me show you this first one. I'm going indoors. How are we getting on then, boys? Good. Didn't look like it. 
So that's the first item, Sega Mega Drive 2. Two controllers, couple of Sonic games, you can't go wrong. My kids are absolutely loving it. They need a bit more practice, but they'll get there. For those old Sega consoles, that's what really got me into gaming back in the day. So it's great to share that moment with my boys. But then of course, I've got to treat myself to some bits as well. Check these. Now what are the chances of this? It was only a couple of weeks ago I picked up Optimal Optimus off of Connor, the Welsh poker picker. Wow, David managed to find this. It's absolutely battered. Wow, I say that, this is all kind of snapped and, and broke up here. But the rest of it, right, is in reasonable condition. No scratches or anything like that. The important thing, right, is this had some pieces that were missing off of my one. So I've stripped the pieces off. Now I've got the gun to go with him and also some of these armor plates on the forearms. He's really starting to come together. I've also got this real retro Generation 1 Transformer. I think he's called Quick Switch, something like that. Not complete, there is a little bit snapped off there, but still really good eye appeal. You get what he's all about. Lovely little find. My favorite video game series of all time, Tony Hawk's. I didn't have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. Now I do. Got the manual, got the disc. Disc is in great condition. This will go into my PlayStation 1 game collection. Might give it a crack first though. There's also a few little other bits in that tray. Look at that. An old Ken of Batman and a Transformers movie DVD. I don't have this variant, don't have that artwork. So that is a great addition to the collection. But these next two items are now the centerpiece of my collection. Have a look at this. The original boxed Power Rangers Deluxe Set Megazord. Back in the day, this would have been £27.75. Got the original sticker on here. The box, considering its age, is in really good condition. No creases. It's a bit bowed, but it can be reshaped. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have the original polystyrene inserts, but still, as a display piece, that is superb. Now, don't worry, it's not just an empty box. In there are the original instructions and also the sticker sheets. They, the guy had never used the stickers. And there was a Megazord in there, but what I've done is I've already got a Megazord, but I've pinched some of the bits off, the better bits, to just add to mine. A really impressive figure. And actually there are still a few bits I do need to complete this Megazord. Shout out for Ever Holding Bricks, who is sorting me out. And hopefully next week in the post, I should have the Pterodactyl armor on the front and also the Mammoth Head Shield. So all I need is the original sword. My brother's done me a 3D print for now but I'm looking out for that and that'll be a fantastic set. But not only did we get the original Megazord box, we also got the original Dragonzord box from 1991. Again, very similar condition, little bit of a crease down there, but still the colors are really vibrant. These bits would have been cut out back in the day, all still intact. It's just a great display piece. And inside as well, original instructions, unpunched sticker sheets, and the Dragon Zord himself. Now this one isn't in the best condition. The end of his tail snapped off. One of these legs actually isn't attached. I've actually temporarily put that in place just for display. Battery covers missing, chewed on the top. Do I care? Absolutely not. Still got the eye appeal. And for going on the shelf in the collection, he is gonna more than hold his own. Brilliant. So a box Megazord and a box Dragonzord to add to the collection. And actually this is where I wanna take the collection. It's been going in so many different directions, never really completing anything. What I wanna do is consolidate it a little bit, get rid of a few bits, and then really focus on the bits that I want, starting with these two iconic pieces here. So once again, David, thanks ever so much for the trade. Really appreciate it. It's really got me back into loving the collection again. I've, it's now got a bit of a purpose. Right, let me just set you up there. Let's run through some eBay sales. I've had a few sales on eBay Monday and Tuesday. Let me take you through a more first step. What an iconic pair of football boots they are. Nike Total 90 shoots. I love the color contrast between the white and the black. UK size 11, screw in studs. They've got everything going for them. Nostalgic boots, great quality boots. They've gone for 30 quid, all in. 
a few teddies to show you. I, I love the look of this one as well. Look at this. From the Lion Guard, this is Fooly the Leopard. Disney Store stamp at the back there. In general, keep an eye out for your Disney Store stamped Lion Guard plushes. This one's gone for £17.50 plus postage. Another Disney Store one. Disney Store logo on the bottom there. Lightning McQueen. That one's gone for £12.50 plus postage. Again, keep an eye out for your Disney car plushes. They usually do pretty well too. And this little guy I only picked up on Wednesday. I paid a pound fifty for him. He has been well loved. Pretty faded. All the tag, the jelly cat tag on the back is all chewed. Even so, he's gone for ten pounds all in. So I hope he finds a good home. Some books, bit of variety in in the sales today. What we've got is Stephen King Duma Key. This is a first edition book by Hodder and Stoughton on the side there. Hardback, decent condition. That one there has gone for just under 10 quid all in. And that is the last of the Stephen King books I've got all sold. And I picked this trilogy of books up on Wednesday as well. All for a pound each. The Lord of the Rings trilogy. These are from 1991. And these sold really quickly, which implied I priced them too low. Browning all on the pages though. Spine's pretty good. They've gone for 15 quid all in. If I had the box, which they're kept in, the, the display box, they go for a lot more than that. Xbox 360 game. Rarely pick them up, but I always pick up Minecraft. That's gone for 10 quid all in. Only got the disc in there. No manual. But yeah, nice quick sale. Two diecast Tonka monster trucks now. Not as popular as I'd hoped. Tonka, great brand, historic brand. These are well made. But they're not as popular as the Hot Wheels Monster Jam Monster Trucks. I do find these a struggle to shift, particularly on their own. I've had to bundle those two together and they've only gone for a tenner all in. I typically pick them up if they're 50p or a pound, but I might think twice about the Tonka ones. And finally, you'll be glad to hear I've sold all of my Match Attacks Elite Shields. I've got six of them here. On average, they've been going for about five of each. That one was a particularly good one. Tavernier, he's gone for £8.50 all in. But just like the Mbappes, just like the Messies, just like the Haaland's and the Benzema's before, all the shields have gone within a week. Let me show you what sold on eBay Friday. First up, this is freaky. Look at this monster high doll here. Click the brain in at the top and her eyes just flick like that. That is pretty unsettling, isn't it? But actually, this one should come with a load of accessories and you're meant to customise it yourself. Should have some hair, should have a lot more clothing options. That's all it come with in the charity shop. Still worth buying because even without all the accessories, it's gone for 15 quid all in. Obviously, the more accessories you can bundle in, the higher the price. Something a bit more gentle now. We've got this Care Bear from 2002. This is Wish Bear. Little bit tired, actually. You can see from the tag there, it's all faded. It's been through the washing machine a fair few times in its life. Still gone for £12.50 all in. Next up, I love a repeat buyer and a bundle sale. Someone has bought all three of these PlayStation games off me for 60 quid all in. We've got Explosive Racing. I paid 99p in the charity shop for that one. We've got Namco Museum Volume 1. Now there's not many of these up on eBay and some of the volumes can go for a lot of money. And a game I did not know existed, Final Doom. All of them come with the manuals, all of them in pretty decent condition. That's a nice little bundle there. And finally with this one, I gambled and it didn't pay off. What we've got here is a PSA 9 Brendan Aronson Merlin card. It's numbered out of 199 and I paid £30 for this on the run up to the World Cup. If you buy cards like this, buy it now off of eBay, that is the market value of that card, 9 times out of 10. So for it to increase in value, you need something to happen for it to increase in value. I bought this before the World Cup hoping Brendan Aronson would make an impact in the tournament and his cards would rise in value. Unfortunately, didn't play out that way. But it's not the end of the world because I sold it for what I bought it for. Sold for just under 30 quid. So yes, I've lost out on postage. I've lost out on eBay fees. But if he had had a special moment in that tournament that caused his prices to spike, would have been worth it, wouldn't it? Not to be this time. I've decided to cash this one in now because I can't see anything on the horizon that's really going to affect his prices too much. Might as well get that money back in my bank. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Shout out Weekend Trips. First commenter on the last video. My next video, I'll be going out charity shop on Wednesday. Might go a bit further afield, but the purpose will be exactly the same. Find stuff to resell on eBay.
find stuff to go to the collection. See you then.